Shalom. Before I begin this video, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Chakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well to this very day, that is feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And also Shalom to the whole elect that is likewise doing this work, showing forth your faith by pushing forth this ministry and this gospel to the other members of the whole elect in faith, in truth and sincerity, in all charity. Now, uh, the topic of this video is uh, going to be entitled The Glorious Return of Yahweh Shai. Okay, the Glorious Return of Yahweh Shai, in which Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Son of the Heavenly Father, who these people inwardly call Jesus or Joshua or uh, Yahushua or whatever other names that they've uh, concocted and are calling by in which we know by way of the scriptures the original language and also by faith is that his name is Yahweh Shai and likewise the Heavenly Father in which his name is also in ancient Hebrew in which his name is Yahweh okay and also with the glorious turn of our Lord Yahweh Shai in which also entails in his name in which his name which is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew it means he delivers or he saves okay so with his him being given that name in which when you go into the scriptures um, or when you go into the um, the Israelite heritage in general and when you deal with men in the ancient world you know you had uh a certain custom in naming the people, all right, in which is known today in modern days term as a uh, nomen omen. Okay, and the word uh, nomen omen means uh, name prediction. Okay, so that's the reason why the son of the heavenly father was given the name of Yahweh Shai is because he was set up to deliver our people. All right. Now, mind you, I said our people, which is uh, exclusive, okay? And our people, which that being uh, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, whose nationality is that of Israel, okay? He's coming back to deliver his people, like it says in the book of uh, Matthew, the first chapter, when it goes into um, his lineage and his birth. He, that's why he's given that name because he was going to save his people all right which is uh, possessive which means he's going to uh, save his people who are who are what the israelites okay so when he returns in a glorious fashion he's going to deliver his people israel and that starts with the elect of the nation of israel okay which the scriptures go into that um, mentioning the elect which is, uh, consists of 144,000 and is, that is uh, spoken about in Revelation the 7th chapter okay but not only is he coming back to deliver the nation of Israel starting with the elect but he's also coming back to destroy alright because in order for a king to rule alright the previous rulership in the kingdom has to be thrown down all right. You know, two rulers just can't coexist. All right. You have to have one that is uh, set up above another. You have to have the master and the servant, a king and his subjects. OK. So that's why this current kingdom that's set up is going to be thrown down. And that's why we laugh at these guys that say that I uh, that, uh, have, you know, the mentality that. America is going to go on forever, all right, which we know, man, and it's common sense at this point to let you know that previous kingdoms that were set up before, they all had a time to rule and they went down, so America is no different, all right? If you're a man understanding and you have some sort of mental capacity, you know, you would understand that this kingdom is not going to last forever, all right? But going back to the topic of Yahweh Shai returning in a glorious fashion, you know, he's not going to come the same way that he did back then in the flesh, you know, by uh, 
by birth, all right, by birth of uh, Joseph, who in um, who was espoused to Mary, all right, in which they did have sex, all right. There's no th no such thing as a virgin birth, all right, in which uh, Joseph impregnated Mary, and, and that's how Yahweh Shai came in the flesh. Now he's not going to return in the same manner, all right. He's going to come back this time and like the title says in a glorious fashion in which what's that glorious fashion that glorious fashion is by way of the chariots of the lord now when the scriptures goes into the chariots or the clouds or a wheel within a wheel that's going into what these people call so-called ufos all right in which we know what they are we know that they're chariots you know and the reason we already know the reason why um the higher ups of Esau, and which, by the way, and we're gonna keep saying this over and over again. You know, every video we're gonna we're gonna uh, expose these devils, man. And who I'm talking about? I'm talking about uh, the so-called white man, which is true biblical nationality. It's Edom, all right. Edom, they're known as the Edomites. Okay, so the higher ups of the nation of Edom, they put out that uh, the term UFOs to have the people, you know, basically being in opposition or to be in, to be at enmity, for lack of a better term, against the chariots, not knowing that the chariots are for our salvation. All right. So that's how our Lord is returning. That's the that's the glorious fashion our Lord is going to return. Case in point, uh, the movie in which we always like to uh, go back to because it, it's accurate. So the movie that that shows you that that glorious fashion is uh, Independence Day. Okay? When you see the uh, the massive chariot arrive on the planet Earth. And that's how Yahweh Shah is going to return. He's going to return in the Fathership, which is going to cover the whole sky of America. All right? And not only America, but the whole entire world. All right? And again, when he returns, he's going to come back to deliver and he's going to come back to destroy. In which, that's balance. All right? You know, the people forget that the Lord is all about balance, man. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the precepts I have here. This is the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 1, starting at verse 11. It says, uh, which also said, ye men of Galilee, and this is uh, the angel speaking, okay? When uh, Yahweh Shai was taken up into the chariot. Okay. After he anointed his disciples and, and um, afterwards they became apostles. So it says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahweh Shai, which is taken from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. See? So the angels asking them, you know, why are you standing up gazing and marveling? All right, this same person that you see being taken up is going to come in like manner. All right, so he left on a chariot. All right, to be taken to the uh, to the heavenly Father to sit at his right hand. And guess what? He's going to come back in like manner. He's going to return the same fashion on a chariot. Okay, that's how he's going to return. Now, um, I want to grab another piece up. This book of Isaiah, chapter uh, forty-seven. Start at uh, verse three. All right, it says, "Thy nakedness shall be uncovered." And whose nakedness is being uncovered? All right, Babylon, which ultimately is going into Esau. Okay, because remember, Babylon is is um, this this new this this Babylon that we live in today, which is America. All right, in which we go into the scriptures and it speaks about Babylon, the great or the virgin daughter of Babylon. All right, especially in the book of Revelation, the uh, 17th chapter, it speaks about America. Okay. So, concerning this scripture, concerning Babylon, it says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, right? Which, again, ultimately goes into uh, not only Babylon, but these uh, the higher ups of Esau, or Edom, in which uh, they have kept certain, um, I want to say practices, but they kept certain, certain um, I want to say tactics, but 
certain things that they kept in the dark now it's being brought to light okay the wickedness of America is being brought to light the uh, the legislations the practices the, the origins of those things being set in order or being set in action all right everything that you see around you here in America the the, the purpose of America pushing out its doctrine towards the other nations. All that's being revealed, man. Okay? So again, it says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Why? Because when he came in the flesh, he came as, as a man. Alright? He came as a lamb because he was set up to be that lamb. The, the sacrificial lamb. Alright? But when, um, actually, let me grab another precept. Because when the um, disciples asked the Yahweh Shai, will he now restore the kingdom of heaven? Because when he came back, because they knew about the prophecy. So when he came back, they thought that that was going to be the end of that age and that the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. All right. So, uh, Grab the precept. Yeah, so this is out of the book of Acts, chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to start at verse 6, get to the point. It says, uh, When they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again? To Israel, see, they asked him because they thought that uh, when he, when he uh, made himself the sacrifice, all right, when he was put on the cross and was made alive again, they thought that the kingdom was going to happen right then and there. All right, so they asked him, "Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel?" Because it's 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 slated and it's written that the kingdom was going to be restored to Israel. All right, but that hasn't happened yet. This this is uh, the next verse, verse seven. It says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power. See, so it's not for us to know the times and the seasons and when the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. Because they again they thought that it's going to happen right then and there, but it didn't. All right. The reason why is because there's certain things that had to be written because the, the the volume was not finished yet. And when I say volume, I'm talking about the Bible, all right, which contained the Old Testament and the New Testament, okay? So there were things that were yet to be revealed in that time that hasn't happened yet, and it hasn't been shown to the apostles, okay? That's why afterwards... You had uh, John the Revelator that was exiled to the Isle of Patmos that was received the vision. And that, and that came after Yahweh Shah was taken up into heaven. Okay? So the book wasn't complete yet. And the prophecies weren't or the prophecies weren't weren't made full as of yet. Alright? Because it had to be recorded. So I want to jump back to uh where I was, um, Isaiah chapter 47, this is at verse uh, 3, it says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen, I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man, see, now I'm going to go from there, I'm going to get the book of 2nd Ezra uh, chapter 13, uh, let's see, yep, 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 13, start at verse uh, 3. It says, and I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And this, and this man is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right. When he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were that were seen under him. All right. This this is what I mentioned before. And, and you know that when they, uh, they made these movies, especially, uh, for example, Independence Day, like I mentioned earlier, when you see these movies, it's like reading out of the Bible. All right. This scene that, that, that you're looking at right now or, or when you look at the movie And you read the scripture It lines up with each other All right, Like it shows the Independence Day When the, uh, the fathership came in um, 
all the people were, were astonished. All right. But if you read it here again at verse three, it says, Now beheld and lo, that man was strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Right. So the people are gonna gonna be astonished and they're gonna tremble when they see this. All right. From what they've seen in the movies, from what they what they heard about. All right, when it's made reality, they're gonna be trembling. Okay? Verse four. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire, right? And which that goes into the, the the beams of concentrated fire. All right. And you see that you see an example of that in um War of the Worlds. Okay. When you had uh, the, uh, the city being torn apart by, by concentrated fire when uh, in the movie they show you it was uh, so called aliens, you know, or whatever, you know, because they you know, of course they dramatized it and, and made it the way and it made the way they wanted to and distorted it. But when the chariots return, right, the so called UFOs, that's what they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be shooting beams of concentrated fire. All right. Uh, verse five says, and after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds out of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Right. So this is going to be during the time of uh, World War Three. All right. And World War Three is soon to come. All right. Because now we're at the we're at the uh, at the point now to where martial law is going to be enacted and everything else is going to fall through. All right. And World War Three is going to be at the climax of the scenario that we're in right now. All right. I read on at verse six, it says, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where, where out the hill was graven and I could not. All right. So it was as if looking out towards a mountain. All right. But like Ezra was seeing, he says, he would have seen a region or a place that was carved out and he couldn't. All right. So he graved that grave mountain, which that's the chariot. All right. And flew upon it. Okay. And again, you saw Independence Day. You see the, the fathership come in and it, and it covered the whole city. All right. Now we'll move on from there. I'm going to get the book of. Uh, Isaiah, let's see here, let's lock in. All right, it's the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 42. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, The Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shai, shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. See? So it says he's going to go forth as a mighty man. All right? That's why in 2 Ezra, again, chapter 13, it says, uh, That man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Because again, with him returning, he's going to be in a glorious fashion and he's going to return with power. And these other nations, especially Esau, is, gonna, is not going to be able to do anything against them. All right. And he says he will stir up jealousy like a, like a man of war. Why? Because he's coming back for his woman. All right. And which his woman is Israel. All right. And he says he's going to come back with a shout. All right. Now, verse uh, 14, it says, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. See? So when he returns, because he's been quiet, man. All right. He's been sitting tight and, and waiting on the heavenly father to give him the command to go all right and when 
the heavenly father Yahweh tells the son Yahweh Shai to go forth and destroy and devour and save and deliver then he's going to come back with a shout man he's going to be hey, and, and you can see it when he returns he's going to be talking mad shit alright you know how Israel is and you know he come out of the tribe of Judah alright so you know Israel you know when we talk when we talk uh talk shit to the other nations man y'all shot is gonna be getting down man all right and when i say that i mean he is going to be lashing out and it says right here so he's gonna cry like a like a travailing woman all right <clears throat> while he destroys and devours okay So that's pretty much it on this lesson in this video. And Lord's will, this was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Until next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well to this day. Shalom, peace and safety, and salutations to the hopeful elect that is also plowing his work, laboring, giving your due diligence to make your calling and election sure, and faith, and truth and sincerity, and in all charity. With that, I say Shalom.